Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor and I'm giving you a very 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 interesting game uh, from Michael Adams playing with the black pieces and playing the Banco Gambit against Prakash GB Prakash uh, from 1992 and it's again a Banco Gambit declined with the move B6 which is taken immediately, correct? Uh, knight c3, d6. Michael Adams is uh, a grandmaster today, and uh, in this game he really shows his excellent uh, play. And in this position, uh, a5 was Michael Adams' interesting idea. Well, in the other closed uh, systems, we had no fianchetto system by white. So, that bishop would stay on that diagonal, the pawn would be on g2, um, and in this case, a5 would, no, would make no sense. Because if we would exchange off the light square, uh, light squared bishops, that would make it easier for white to uh, maneuver a knight here and keep it there. Sorry, my mouse uh, is a little bit drunk. So that means in this case, when the bishop is away from that diagonal, we can actually play a5. A very nice idea to get that bishop here and now take even a knight off if it comes there. Queen z c2 and in this position um, knight a6 was played. Let's just drop back. In one other way to play this um, fitting to our uh let's say automatic play by black would be bishop a6 here immediately and let's say white would take away the opportunity for us to exchange of the knight here which is a theme in the Banco gambit then we can station that knight on d7 as we are um, used to and that rook gets off that uh, <coughs> pin for the pawn rook fb8 and after the next move we can now start to exchange off pieces via this route remember exchanging off knights especially the one on c3 makes the um, white queen side weaker and uh, Black's counterplay will increase. The point is that Black has a very beautiful and flexible pawn structure, compact pawn structure, which is advantageous in the end game. So we want to exchange pieces. Now let's go on with this analysis of mine. Say Bishop g5 to exploit the uh, unprotectedness of e7 simply king f8 there and if queen d2 to exchange of the bishops we can now get the knight to e5 because that knight is gone so the bishop can recapture on e5 <coughs> and even if a uh, bishop h6 would be played then we can take uh, here and uh, well we can take on uh, h6 we can uh, simply go on here. This looks nice. And let's just drop back if that bishop stays where it is and the knight takes here because white wouldn't like a bishop maybe on f3. Then we can take on e5 with the bishop. And after check, simply king back because now we can defend with the rook on the seventh rank. And now we have managed to exchange off one pair of knights. The next will uh, come probably. 
We can uh, go back with our bishop if needed. F4 doesn't look very good because that would uh, block in that white bishop and would make it vulnerable to moves such as h6. This would be my approach to play. Just play the usual way your knights uh, onto their Benko squares as uh, as you're used to. This is my analysis. And then simply w uh, with a thematic knight exchange you can really ease your game. Okay, let's drop back to this position. Michael Adams played another way which is uh, leading to a very very nice game. Knight a6, a3, and knight c7. So another a different uh, location for the queen's knight. e4, bishop a6 attacking the rook, and rook a b8. Why this rook? Well, we don't have two semi-open files, so that rook uh, could come to def uh, help the counter play here and this knights thematically pressurize the d uh, four or d5 pawn and you might say w well uh, we we cannot take them of course not now but this kind of dissuades white from uh, pushing too hard that would probably make that pawn fall. Rook b1 and now a very thematic move queen to b3. Well, let's just drop back. These pawns are committed. If they would have been committed this way uh, mostly in the fully accepted Banco gambit and the, there, there would be no a pawn then the queen should have gone to a5 and if the pawns are committed this way, you can even get your queen to a3 if the bishop is gone there. And stop the white pawn advance. And the second idea behind such a queen move, blockading the pawns, is to exchange of queens. And this is very important to remember. Exchanging of queens is again advantageous for black because um the more you exchange of pieces the more the pawn structure of black uh tells so the queens are exchanged and the rook is on a very nice square e5 now let's look how michael adams reacted to this he took the pawn on d5 The knight was taken and recaptured. And now you see after knight to d2 black seems to be uh, under quite tactical pressure here. Rook d3 is the only move to have a reasonable position here and this is why uh, already uh, a few moves ago um, before black I think went to uh, exchange of queens here. I think already in this position, let's just drop back, Michael Adams uh, probably calculated the 5 pawn push afterwards because that's necessary. You see that rook d3 is the only move here, pawn takes and bishop f1. And it seems as though black uh, is not able to hold his uh, pieces. F5. Well, that seems like an exchange sacrifice for a pawn in the center, having two uh, mobile pawns. But indeed, this bishop is having a very nice diagonal. And if the bishops are recaptured, there are two bishops looking down this diagonal. The second um, factor is that this uh, rook isn't in the game yet, and uh, 
this rook is coming to the game very uh, easily and we have again the mobile pawns so this is an absolutely equal position but not at all drawish knight f3 and rook b8 attacking the rook uh, attacking the pawn the rook was taken and now you see the two bishops compensating uh, for the time being for the loss of the exchange and of course black is up a pawn and he's got the initiative and the very strong move in this position is c4 very thematic the c pawn in the Benko Gambit uh, plays an important role in such uh, positional progress. Knight g5 was White's move to try to exchange off or to get that bishop on g7. Let's just drop back. I think rook d1 was a better try. You see, let's just drop back, c3 is black's threat. And if uh, afterwards black is threatening to uh, fork the pieces, that means that the pawn must be recaptured. And this bishop here is forking the two rooks, regaining the invested material, having one a pawn. So this is why knight g5 is played. But rook d1 uh, would stop c3 for the time being. And now let's pretend we take here and knight e1. And after knight c3 we exchange off material. Well, in, the, in this position it's very difficult for white to hold this. Rook b1 to attack the knight, and if c3, that would be bad, that would be losing the pawn after uh, rook c1, so knight to d3, king f1. These are almost only moves here for white. And uh, the knight interferes with the rook attack, and after king e2, king e6, King d1 is Im uh, one important move. And after king d5, the only move keeping white on the board would have been rook d8. And I think in this position to foresee this is practically impossible. So it's very difficult already for uh, white. Knight g5 and h6 inviting uh, white to take off that bishop but rook e8 pinning the knight unpinning and now we take the pawn so you see that knight maneuver was an illusionary plan knight f4 takes 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 and now in the exchange of pawns and now you see with the bishop pair they coordinate really easily with the pawns and that mobile uh, <laughs> three uh, passed pawns the game is very easily won king f7 f3 bishop b4 Rook a1, and now the pawns start rolling. And this move is very nice. Uh, the bishops are looking uh, very nicely down here, so that pawn can now advance. Bishop c7, and this is uh, taken out of the question. And in this position, G.B. Prakash resigned to Michael Adams. Let's just recap this game. 
we have the declined variation in particular with white fianchettoing his bishop which makes a difference in this case we can play a5 and after queen c2 we can choose to play the more complicated way in my opinion uh, like Michael Adams did or my way developing your knights to the most usual squares and now uh, exchanging of a pair of knights thematically. This would look nice for me afterwards you can exchange knights this way and you can play as Michael Adams did which is probably slightly more co complicated. Well this knight on c7 doesn't have to stay there forever, forever. maybe white wouldn't pu push e5 so you can even exchange the knights this way e4 this is the game continuation and now you see the thematic queen exchange a very important move to make progress and now this very nice tactical sequence of bishop f1 very coolly answered with f5 that keeps the knight out of uh, e4 so it cannot attack the very important central black pawns so knight f3 rook b8 takes takes and the very important move c4 knight g5 an illusion and now black's pieces are unstoppable takes and in after trying to nab one pawn well that even wouldn't be necessary you could play d3 immediately but a4 says what are you doing here actually and Prakash resigned to Adams I hope you liked the game please comment subscribe and like the video if you did see you next time